Let us worship God today, for God is great. God has blessed us with life, with faith, with community. Let us worship God today, for God is good. God forgives us 
and encourages us and loves us. Let us worship God today because we are God's people. Thanks be to God. trusting in God's mercy to forgive us and to set us free. Let us make our honest confession together. Let us pray. Loving God, we have not loved you or each other with our whole hearts. Forgive us, we pray, and lead us toward wholeness that we may be filled with your joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hear these words of assurance and pardon. Who was in a position to condemn? Only Jesus Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And Christ prays for us. Any who are in Christ are a new creation. The old way of life has gone. And a new life has begun. Thanks be to God. Friends, know this day that you are forgiven. Live at peace then, and pray also for me, a sinner. Amen. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit. Whose love has set me free As it was in the beginning Is now and ever shall be Amen Glory to God Whose goodness shines on me And to the Son Whose grace has pardoned me And to the Spirit Whose love has set me free As it was in the beginning it's now and ever shall be. Amen. Oh, yeah. Sisters and brothers, welcome to this time of worship. And on this Mother's Day, I wish great joy to those of you who are celebrating. And I offer tender and healing prayers for those of you for whom this is a hard day. May the fierce and strong love of God, who is mother and father to us all, hold, guard, 
and keep us. Just a couple of announcements for you. If you're interested in membership here at Clinton Presbyterian, we'll be holding an online new members class on May 17th at 7 p.m. If you need more details about that, please contact the office or check your email. We sent out at the beginning of this week a video update about building needs. If you haven't had a chance to watch that video, please, please do. And we have a couple of informational meetings scheduled, one for Thursday, May 13th, and one for Wednesday, May 19th, both at 7 p.m. So if you have any questions for our elders or for myself about what's gonna be happening with the plaster ceiling repair, please log on and ask any questions that you have. And then we will also have a congregational meeting on May 23rd for the purposes of voting on a loan, which we're going to secure in order to move forward with that work. We continue with this hybrid format of worship. We're meeting in person and we're meeting outside in person and we're also offering to you these online worship services. If you wanna get involved in any, any way, please just say the word. And now I'm gonna hand you over to our chaos youth. Um, really excited about the energy that we have had in youth group really all through this time of pandemic and our teens are going to be partnering with the flemington area food pantry and i'll let you sh let them share with you some details about what they have planned in the coming weeks and how you can be involved in helping them i'll hand you over to chaos at chaos we've been talking a lot about god's love for all people especially those who don't have as much as we do we know it's important to take care of our neighbors that's why we're excited to be volunteering with the flemington area food pantry for their farmers market on june 19th we are putting putting together cake kits for kids who visit the market that day with their families we need your help we're asking for donations such as play items such as sidewalk chalk and coloring books to help our friends feel loved so what can you donate? We appreciate your help. There will be a donation box outside the back door of the church for all your collection. We are asking all items to be donated by June 10th so that we can pack our kid kits and be able to give them away when we are at the market on June 19th. Thank you in advance for all of your help. Long live the heart, long live the soul that knows what it wants. That peace you can't find. That part is a whole, and it never lets go. Hi friends, how are you today? I hope that you are doing well. So I have something with me today. I have a bunch of lollipops and there are a bunch of different flavors of lollipops. I have blue raspberry and grape, bubble gum, orange, turn it this way, lemon and lime, strawberry, and in the center, butterscotch. I wonder what flavor is your favorite flavor of lollipop? You can tell me the next time that we see each other. Now, what I have noticed is every time my boys get to pick a lollipop, they want to pick a certain flavor. And they'll usually pick strawberry or bubble gum because those are their favorite colors. But do you know what one never, ever gets picked in our house? Butterscotch. And I don't know why, but when I asked Mr. David, he said, butterscotch, that tastes terrible. So it always gets left out, this butterscotch lollipop. Do you know that sometimes we can treat people a little bit like that last to be chosen butterscotch lollipop? Sometimes when we're playing games, certain kids are always the last ones to be chosen. Sometimes kids get left out from parties, other activities. Maybe when someone's picking teams, they don't get picked for that team. Whatever the reason, it 
doesn't feel good to be left out, does it? I wonder if you can think about a time when you felt left out or when you were chosen last. Think about how that made you feel. Do you know that you weren't alone in that sad time? That Jesus was with you? And Jesus doesn't want anyone to be left out. In the Bible, he reminded his friends that he loves everybody, all of the children, all of the grown-ups, no matter what they look like or what their interests are or their talents are. And just before he left his friends to go again to be with God, he reminded them, love one another as I have loved you. He was reminding them to love everybody and to not leave anybody out, no matter what. So let's say a wee prayer together and we'll ask God to help us to be people who love the way that Jesus loves us so that we don't leave anybody out. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for delicious treats like lollipop. And thinking about the flavors that we don't like helped us to remember that sometimes we leave people out because we don't feel that we like them. But then we remembered that Jesus taught us not to leave anybody out, but to include all of your children and to love all of your children. So this week, when we're at school or when we're at gymnastics or playing a sport or even when we're at home. Help us to include everyone. Help us this week to love everyone because you love everyone and you've told us to try to be like you. This we pray in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. This morning's scripture reading comes from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are delighted to finally have David's mom here visiting with us this week after far, far too long apart. When we make a visit to Swickley, the last thing that we usually do before pulling out of town is we swing by Sue's place to say one last goodbye. 
and it's always a bit of a comedy scene with everyone piled in and all of our stuff piled into the van, all of the supplies that we need, the snacks and blankets and pillows and headphones and DVDs and limited quantities of water because we are not stopping on the way home. And over the years, Sue has always said the same parting words to us. A whispered prayer, really. Guard and protect. Guide and direct. She also always looks squarely at David and reminds him, precious cargo, honey. This is a mother's reminder to her grown son that one must put their love for their wife and children ahead of their desire to beat their last best travel time between Swickley and Clinton. And in case you're wondering, our swiftest travel time to date is four hours and 45 minutes. But those first parting words, guard and protect, guide and direct, those words are a blessing from Sue over us, a prayer of a faithful mother over us. And on this Mother's Day, the gift and power of those parting words of love is not lost on me. Parting words are powerful. The last time many of us saw family, perhaps we didn't know that we would be apart for so long, that this time of pandemic would keep us apart for so long. And I know for sure that I'll be more mindful of the parting words that I speak to loved ones in the future. Jesus knew, no doubt, that parting words shape us in powerful ways when he was speaking with his disciples just hours before his arrest and betrayal, as we have it recorded here for us in John 15, as Kathy read. This follows on from the passage that we read last week about the vine and the branches and the importance of pruning and abiding. And what are Jesus' parting words exactly? Nine times in just eight verses, he uses the word love. What did he want his disciples to remember? Love. What did he want his disciples to carry into the world? Love. What was to be their foundation always and forever? Love. Jesus' parting words, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. It's so simple, you know, you could put it on a bumper sticker, on a checkbook, you could use it as a marketing slogan for a church. It's so simple that it runs the risk of becoming cliche. Think of all the ways in which we have reduced the power of the word love. You know, love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. We love that new series on Netflix. I love that shirt on you. When we use the word love, quite often we're using it to mean an extreme fondness for someone or for something, and there's nothing at all wrong with that. It's just that when we come to read these words of Jesus, we need to see and understand a deeper meaning. It's not about a feeling or a romantic notion or a fondness. As I've said before, when we read it here, love is an action verb. It's an action verb. In the Hebrew scriptures and in the New Testament, love is something you do. One theologian put it really well when they wrote, love seeks the well-being of others in concrete action on their behalf. Concrete action on their behalf. And according to Jesus, not only is love an action verb, but love is also a command. In fact, it's the only commandment that is given in all of John's gospel. It's not optional. And it sounds pretty strange at first to our ears to command love. Any of you who have parented or tried your hand at teaching Sunday school or coached a kid's sports team, well, you know what it's like to ask a group of kids to get along with each other, to cooperate, to love each other, and it can be 
even more difficult if it's a group of siblings. It's almost like Jesus knew the minute he left the room that they would be back to their old ways, figuring out who was the greatest among them, who was the low man on the totem pole, and who would they vote off the island of discipleship the moment that Jesus' back was turned. But you know, Jesus wants more for his disciples then and now than a simple tolerance of one another. You know, doing nice things with clenched teeth and resentful hearts. Jesus was after authentic feeling, honest engagement, generous action. To translate his words in one way which might make them more powerful for us, he was saying, do love for one another as I have done for you. Now that's a challenge. But I love what the Dutch priest Henry Nouwen once wrote. He said, if we wait for a feeling of love before loving, we may never learn to love well. But when we do love, we discover that our feelings catch up with our actions. Do love for one another as I have done for you. I wish I had a better understanding of how Jesus' commandment to do love might have sounded to those early disciples because it sure sounds countercultural today, right? This is Rachel Maddow doing something to help the well being of Tucker Carlson. It's Ted Cruz actively contributing to the well being of Nancy Pelosi. Could that ever really happen? In a partisan, polarized, and pandemic-weary religious and political climate, that's almost unimaginable. Remember back a few years to the wedding sermon preached by Michael Curry, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, a sermon that caught the attention of the world when Harry and Meghan tied the knot? Time and time again, Bishop Curry repeated this refrain, love is the way, love is the way. Well, Bishop Curry subsequently wrote a book by the same title, and it was published at the beginning of 2020. I had a chance to read it just a couple of months ago. And in the book, he details an interview with a reporter after the wedding who said to him essentially, well, you know, love is the way. It sounds nice, but isn't a world built on love a little Pollyanna-ish? Bishop Curry said he didn't hesitate in his reply, and he said, okay, let me do a Dr. Phil on you. How is the way of the world working for you right now? Who's the Pollyanna here? He went on to say, we're living in a world right now that's built on selfishness and indifference and even hatred, and it doesn't look good. Only a life of love can open the gates and point the way to beloved community. And according to Jesus, that work, which may seem unimaginable given the big picture we know of division and hurt and sinfulness and all of its multifaceted forms, love is really the central purpose of the life of discipleship. It begins with the community of the baptized, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Love is what we hope the world sees first when they watch and experience the community of the baptized. Love is what we hope the world notices being fully expressed between those who try to follow Jesus. People doing love for each other in ways that build up the body and proclaim God's grace. Love Love is to be the first thing that people see and know about Christians. Those are Jesus' parting words. But here's the problem. Generally speaking, love is not the first thing that is seen. Not by a long shot. 
The Barna Group did some extensive research a few years back asking non-churchgoers what words or phrases best described Christianity and high on the list, judgmental, hypocritical, exclusionary. Those are haunting words, are they not? That's a problem. It's a problem when we are not being known for our love for one another and love for those we call stranger. And to speak quite frankly and clearly, it's sinful. On this Mother's Day, when we give thanks for the ones who have loved us with the fierce, strong, unrelenting love of good mothers, when we sit with the sorrow of relationships severed by death, and when we acknowledge the pain of broken and wanting earthly relationships and unfulfilled hopes and dreams, what a gift this scripture is, which calls us back again to the love of God in Christ Jesus, which exceeds the very best of what we know here in this earthly realm offers a balm to what is lacking here and gives us a dream to live into. You see, that love of God in Jesus is to be not only an example, but also a source. Remember last week when we talked about the vine and the branches and the, the vine? The vine is where our love originates and deepens. It's where it replenishes itself. In other words, if we don't abide, we can't love. Jesus' commandment to us is not that we wear ourselves out trying to conjure love from our own easily depleted resources, but rather it's that we abide in the holy place where divine love becomes possible, that we make our home in Jesus' love, the most abundant and inexhaustible love. And when that becomes the grind of our being, then these parting words of Jesus become a call to action that move us past platitudes and into action that changes our relationships, relationships which are to bear witness in the world. Towards the end of his book, Bishop Curry tells of another interview with a different journalist, and this one happened just days before the royal wedding. Now, this reporter was out to stir things up. He was interviewing Bishop Curry alongside the Archbishop of Canterbury. And the journalist said, well, we know the two of you disagree on same-sex marriage. So how is it that the two of you are sitting here together and will be together at this wedding tomorrow? Both Bishop Curry and the Archbishop of Canterbury give similar answers. This is my brother, said Curry. We follow Jesus. He teaches us the way of love. And that love dominates our relationship, not our agreements. Our disagreements. Friends, in the midst of difference and division and just about every ism that you know, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Whether we are witnessing on a global stage or doing church on the local level week to week, if love is not the first thing people see or experience when observing or participating in the church, then we're not being fully who God created us to be. A people commanded to love one another as we have been loved by Jesus, which is to say completely, without reservation, nothing holding back. That is a huge call. On this Mother's Day, may Mother Church rise up here and there and everywhere to love as Christ has loved us. Those are parting words to live by. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now trusting that God hears and answers our prayers, let's gather together the prayers of this congregation. We continue to pray for those of you who are wrestling with illness, those of you who are recovering from surgeries, those of you who are facing uncertainty in the days ahead. If you have specific needs, please let us know so that we can add you to our weekly prayer chain. And together with those local prayers, we gather up the hopes and the hurts of our nation and of our world. We trust them to a God who hears and answers. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we see the beauty of new life awakening all around. Thank you for your faithfulness. We are reveling some in days of glad reunion. Thank you for your faithfulness. We who doubt, who worry, who fear, we who try and fail to follow Jesus, we thank you today for your faithfulness. And in moments of silent prayer, we lift to you 
all that we carry on our hearts. We pray to you this day for our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this day for your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this day for this church family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this day for our own families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We name ourselves this day grateful recipients of your love. And now help us to live it out. So abide in us, Holy Spirit. Abide in us with your love. Abide in us with your power. Abide in us that we might love one another as Christ has loved us. And abide through us that we might love your world as you love the world. This we ask in the strong and certain name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, my dear friends, this day and always, may the grace of God, the loving friendship of Christ, and the gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen and amen. <laughs>